Hello and welcome. This is Sarah Northrup. This is the Zoning Board of Appeals hearing. Um, the uh, notice was published in the Gazette for this meeting, public hearing date 7-8-23. Our first application, I'm sorry, as far as um, Robert's Rules of Order, I believe we're supposed to open up for a public comment on anything that does not have to do with an application in front of us. Is there uh, anyone here? And uh, um, I think just to make sure, uh, Vice Chair, I would like to notify the public that the meeting is being recorded. And it was June 8th, Thank not you. July 8th, just quickly. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have a Carrie Cuthbert uh, with the raised hand. Thank you. I will be dependent on uh, Nathan to see the raised hands and recognize folks. Go ahead. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for um, giving me a little time tonight. I just wa wanted to pop in um, with something that's not on the agenda. Um, would I, you, uh, excuse me, Carrie, before yes. you go further, would you mind saying your name and your address, please? Yes. Um, my name is Carrie Cuthbert. I live at 122 Pine Street in Florence. And I uh, wanted to just speak briefly um, to the zoning board. I know you are aware that members, uh, that neighbors of the Bombix Center for Arts and Integrity in Florence, um, including me, um, have recently asked the city, um, well, a number of relevant city departments to help us find solutions to what's sort of become kind of longstanding um, noise issues related to just a portion of uh, Bombix's use of the, uh, the property at 130 Pine Street and more specifically the sort of loud evening events. Um, mm -hmm. And I just wanted to note that these challenges, they stem from the fact that Bombix is part of a residential neighborhood and that they're also operating out of you know, an 1860s um, timber framed uh, building, a church that's not designed for and it's not currently capable of really um, containing noise. So as we are looking um, to solutions that will both kind of enable Bombix to continue its programming and also minimize the, dis um, the uh, disruption to the neighbors, I just wanted to lift up one of the suggestions that we had um, put forward for the, um, for the zoning board in particular, and that would be to consider um, amending the zoning for Bombix to have them adhere to the residential decibel limit as opposed to the office industrial one. Um, I think we think that that could be, that could really go a long way <laughs> to, to sort of achieving a fair and a, a workable and a, and a clear um, solution for everybody and would recognize that they you know, that they're in a neighborhood and they're really close to a lot of different homes. Um, and I also, at the same time, wanted to acknowledge that Bombix is um, working on making changes to the building to mitigate sounds. Um, I don't know how, how or when those are projected to be complete or what measures are kind of in place to, to assess their effectiveness. But if this um, suggestion is something that you all are open to doing, then it might also make sense to you know, have some sort of grace period for implementation, um, so that the events that Bombix has already booked that you know might exceed the residential limit can still go forward. So I just wanted to pop in and say that, um, and uh, leave it at that. But thank you for giving me the time. Thank you very much. I would uh, acknowledge that the Zoning Board of Appeals does not set any rules. Um, we are dependent upon the the city boards and council to set the rules uh, they're applied. We are a, mainly a enforcement and appeals board. So thank you very much. That's good to hear about. All right, any, uh, any other hands? Um, excuse me, uh, uh, Sarah, but I mean, if you... Yes pleases the board. I can just say a quick thing about what Carrie Cooper's brought up. I, I don't, I, oh, I don't okay. think that's appropriate. Nathan. Okay. I, I great. think in yes. public comment, people say things yeah. we don't even, we're not even yeah. allowed to respond as I understand. My apologies. Thank no, you. that's okay. But thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Elizabeth. We cannot, um, Sorry, I didn't mean to step on your toes, Sarah. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I very much appreciate that. That's exactly what I was looking for. 
Um, any other uh, completely different uh, issues at hand? Can we open the first public hearing? Yes. All right, so the public meeting is open, and we will open the public hearing on our first application, which is um, Sarah, Sarah, this is yes. Maureen here. Are you um, Hello, intending Maureen. to introduce us? Hello, Into, intending to introduce us to- uh, I had forgotten to. I had forgotten folks to at the table. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, please, each introduce yourselves. I am Sarah Northrup. I'm Maureen Scanlon. Oh, we are the three zoning board members on board tonight. Thank you. So odd not being able to see faces. Yes. And uh, Nathan Chung is our staff heading office. All right. Can we open the public hearing? Let's. Thank you on first application. Um, uh, number 405 Ryan Road Florence I think that's the, the second one to... Sarah Sarah I think that's Here. the second hearing I'm sorry sorry I had the papers out of order <laughs> you wanted me to chair huh <laughs> <laughs> well you are the vice chair <laughs> right well, I'll, I'll um, before we open, I'll take a roll call um, to um, to uh, open the hearing. So, um, um, Sarah. Yes. Uh, Elizabeth. Here. Maureen. Yes. Thank you. Paper to find the first. Shall I announce this one for you, Sarah? Would that be helpful? Please do. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is an application for a special permit for a change from an accessory structure to a dwelling with new zoning violations. Uh, the applicants are Bill Sweet and Valerie Gintis, uh, who are present here. And this the address is 59 Lincoln Ave, Northampton, map ID 25C-051. Um, and this was published on May 25th and June 1st. Um, and as I understand it, this special permit is uh, request requires a super majority vote of all three members that are hearing the issue today. And um, the standard is that the board must find that the further reduction in the side setback is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing nonconformity aspect of the house. Um, and as I understand it, you know, we've read these documents, as I understand it, the current structure is, I believe, two feet from the side and by permitting this change to an accessory structure, it would change the house side set back to two feet. Is that correct, Nathan? Uh, so a uh, little clarification. I think I heard you say change to accessory structure is actually changing from accessory structure to uh, to a house, um, a second uh, single family house. Otherwise, yes, um, it, all the footprints are physically the same, but what's happening is, um, uh, you know, right now it has a setback of two feet and, uh, you know, it's an accessory structure, residential structure that require greater setbacks. So when you're converting the use from uh, accessory structure to residential, you're creating a new zoning violation because it's a, it's a greater zoning violation in terms of being a residential structure. Right, which is why they need permission to make this change. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and there is a separate, I, I think there's a separate planning board uh, piece to this, but our, we are limited in the uh, zoning board to what we just read. So anything having to do with the planning board is not within our purview and we would not be hearing tonight. So when um, the chair of tonight's meeting calls on you for your presentations, if you could 
just confine it to the jurisdiction of the zoning board. We'd appreciate that. Thank you, Elizabeth. And um, and that would go also for the, we want to hear the public comment and public know that our jurisdiction on this is uh, limited to this application. The applicant like to present? Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Valerie Gintis. My husband, Bill Sweet, is on a different little square in our meeting. And I wanted to start by saying thank you for taking the time to hear um, this case and also for your work in helping to make Northampton the amazing place that it is. Um, we have lived in our house since 2005. Um, and we uh, have had a two car garage um, which we are have converted to a rec room, and we are now interested in um, adding a kitchenette and a bathroom uh, into the space, which would not change the footprint, but would change the use of the space. Um, from my crash course in uh, zoning and planning, uh, from what I understand that we already have a non-conforming plot, um, and we are in an infill district near downtown. And so um, we are coming to you to ask for variance, if that's the correct word, um, to be able to move forward with this project. The neighbor who, for whom our property is non-conforming for this site has written a letter to the board, which you should have already received. Do you have that? Yes, received and read. Great. Great. I don't know what she said, but she said she wrote a letter. Um, so essentially, um, I can answer questions about the neighborhood, about the project. I just am I'm new to this sort of whose scope is what, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions to be able to give you the information you need to decide. Thank you. I have the, the sketch, and so my understanding is that the, the conversion to an accessory structure is expanding, and so the question is, is this potentially detrimental to the neighborhood? Um, do we have any questions from the board? Uh, I have a couple. They might be questions for Nathan. Um, so Nathan, what we're talking about here, let's start there, mm -hmm. is changing the use of that accessory unit to a single family home. Does that mean when the house at some point, should it change hands, any other uh, owner moving forward uh, will also be able to have it be, even though I respect and admire that it's the use right now is intended to be simply occasional, uh, it, it could be a permanent second second dwelling unit on the property, correct? It is, a, the proposal is a permanent um, dwelling unit and it's a special permit, not a variance for clarity. Yes. Um, so even if it changes hands, it'll permanently carry over. Okay, and so uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And you, I saw a note that it would require two egresses, which I assume is out of our, we don't need to be concerned. They will comply to all zoning code. Uh, I mean, all building code for create a, mm -hmm. creating a second unit, correct? Yes, we, um, in the rec room, which is the part that's already changed of it, we have a sliding door and a fireproof door on the other side of the room. So we already have two egresses um, and that would remain true if we renovated the inside. Again, we're not changing the footprint. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually making the outside much nicer instead of being a garage door that you can see when you look down the driveway, it will be a cute bank of windows. So it actually kind of creates that downtown um, cottage feel that Lincoln Ave and some of the other streets have, um, but it doesn't change the footprint at all. Okay, and neither egress would be facing the really close proximity to this already violated setback. No. I'm sorry, no. say that one more time. No, and that's not our purview anyway, I don't think. 
well, it did. I I did see it in our notes that. Uh, yeah, they're they're not sensitive. they're not on that sideline. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. saying you're saying right. the door the door so, would not be on the side because then it wouldn't. Right, right, right. And, the doors are front and back, and the the setback question is on the side. Yes. So it's kitty corner to either of the doors or right. both of the doors. Ah, gotcha. And Nathan, because it's turning into a resident, the request is to turn it into a residential unit. That would, you know, according to current code, would actually require 15 feet setback. Yes, that's correct. That's okay. the so the um in uh, if the entire property was uh, conforming already in terms of if the existing principal home, the one in the front was conforming in terms of setbacks, mm -hmm. actually this um, permit would not even be viable. The uh, The reason that it's viable is because the um, principal dwelling itself, um, let me get the measure much, the principal dwelling itself has a, a non-conforming setbacks. And so the, the uh, zoning code allows with the special permit by the board to um, allow this additional setback violation um, based on that, but it is discretionary. So you, you know, you know, you're not obligated to um, grant the permit. But yes, normally, normally it would be 15 feet uh, for size setbacks. And let me just. So currently, the primary residence has um, five feet on the left side and 11 feet on the left side, uh, right side. Five feet on the left, eleven feet on the left. Uh, right, I'm sorry. On the, in terms of setbacks, um, with this current uh, proposed change, once that happens, um, the setback will be left setback uh, five feet, and then the right side two feet. Um, this the the the, the rec rooms uh, two feet setback will become the 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 minimal uh, residential setback for the whole property. Those are all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that answers my questions as well. I know that you've indicated at this point you only intend to use it for a week out of each month, but I think Maureen's question clarified that it could be used for more than that, and um, that's that's up to you. Um, and I assume, Nathan, this does not have to be owner occupied or any of the uh, ADU requirements, right? No. And uh, um, when considering this, uh, we really we, we really shouldn't consider it as a temporary, like part-time uh, uh, residence. We have to consider the all the possibility that it's legally allowed to use for including full-time residents. Okay. So yes, um, that's that should be considered. You shouldn't really consider um, it as a part-time residence. Okay. And apologies, Maureen, you're absolutely right about the egresses. That was an issue. So thank you for asking that. I, I don't have any other questions. I mean, I have the letter from the neighbor, which was nothing but effusively positive. Um, we live in the best neighborhood ever. <laughs> well, some of us may take issue with that, but I'm glad you feel <laughs> well, that each way. Each of us live in the best neighborhood ever in this city. Yeah. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I guess I'm just curious to see if there's anybody else present at this hearing that had any comments to make about the, the proposed change. Yeah. Opening up the public hearing for comments. Uh, anyone in attendance have uh, to say something about this? Hear nothing. Nathan would recognize a hand if he saw it. I I don't see a hand raised. Uh, please, if um, if you have a comment, please raise your virtual hand. I don't see anything, uh, Sarah. We have any anything from DPW? Uh, any other um, the departments? I I saw the DPW statement of uh, I think no concerns. Is that right, Nathan? Yes, they had no concerns. Yeah. All right. Um, All right. Bill or Valerie, is there anything else before we close the public hearing piece of this? Um, I think just to say that the the nature of our neighborhood as it's emerging, especially post COVID, is that um, there's been a lot of um, really fantastic construction going on on all sides. Um, and uh, we're, you know, as as a neighborhood, we are 
here for the long haul and we have this kind of beautiful space that we live in and um, just how much we appreciate living in the city, I guess. Good. Okay, I move that we close the public hearing. I'll second. Do we need a roll call on closing it? My apologies, I was taking minutes. Um, <laughs> uh, Elizabeth? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Maureen? Yes. So the, um, the public hearing is closed. We can discuss the matter amongst ourselves. Um, in any particular concerns or comments about conditions that might be appropriate. I'm comfortable with this request. Um, along with the egress issue that you addressed, Maureen. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I am too. Would I mean, that I, I be a condition? Would we pose that as a condition? It seems like that's more like uh, building inspector related. I don't know. Well, um, the building inspector would require the, the two egresses that would be required, but the location of them. Yeah. Um, okay. There's an issue with a particular location that might be problematic. Yeah. yeah, no, I think it would be good for us to address that. Um, you know, I, I would simply say that I, I think it meets the standard that we're talking about. Uh, it certainly isn't any more detrimental to the community, to the area, and it actually seems to enhance the goals of our um, zoning ordinances to create more infill um, and that this will be creating more housing. So um, I, I, it sounds like a great project and I know that the planning board would take it from here, but as far as the zoning board is concerned, um, I, I think it's something that we should approve. Would um, either of you like to propose? Sure, um, I'll, I'll move that we approve the application um, for a special permit um, for uh, converting the accessory unit to a single family home um, with the only condition from the zoning board, uh, this is a, of course separate from anything that the planning board would do, but that there, the two egress doors should not be located on the side of the building closest to the property line, to the setback line. Right. I can good. second that. Taking a, yes, by roll call, Elizabeth. Yes. Sarah? Yes. Maureen? Yes. Unanimous. All right. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you very much. We really you. appreciate your effort and consideration. Thank you. Well, we appreciate what you're doing too. So good luck you with too. that. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much. Good. Right. So well, we now. should hang up so you can continue your business, correct? You can stay yes. on if you'd like, but we'll we'll be moving on to the other hearing. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you both. Bye bye. On to our second application to open the public hearing, the application by Philip Andrakitis at four o five Ryan Road, Florence. This is the all fence. Along its property line, and, and um, see the uh, so this is a special permit application, and again we will ask the address to the content of the application, and is the applicant available to get your project? Um, identify with your name and address. So, Sarah, um, we have uh, one person that says conference one uh, from Zoom, and another person just called in from a phone, ending with the 4014. So, I'm wondering if those are the applicants. Um, 
conference one, would you unmute and uh, identify yourself if you're the applicant? I am not the applicant, no. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, forward uh, the 740414 number. Would you unmute? You can press star six if you are the applicant. Um, this person is not responding. So, hmm. Um, well, we do have the application in front of us. Um, Mary, that the applicant state their project is and answer questions, and then we open up for comments and questions from the public. Thoughts about the, how we proceed, members of the board? Yes, it is. Um, I don't know that I've ever encountered a situation where the applicant or a representative of the applicant isn't present. The, um, one of the public members, Lorraine Ryan, raised her hand. I don't know if she knows anything about the applicant. Um, but I mean, we probably should, I, um, actually, I, I, think, I, I think, yeah, I, I don't think we should be asking yeah. Um, yeah. other commentators. I just think we ask if there is a applicant or a representative of the applicant and and then okay. Sarah? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I, is there um procedure for this? Because I, I have to say I'm not comfortable moving forward without the opportunity to hear the applicant. Well, there was plenty of opportunity for the applicant to be present. I don't think that's our responsibility to make allowances for for no. their not being present. We have options. We can uh, proceed, you know, based on the pieces of paper in front of me and you, and um, you know, certainly limits our ability to have understanding. Uh, the other option might be to table it without prejudice, I suppose. I'm not sure how that works. Um, I have to object to, uh, if I might, might say, Sarah, I have to object to tabling this because um, my sense is that there is some urgency to this because one of the things I read about this application is that the applicant had begun doing this construction without a permit and I don't, and I did see one photograph where it showed sort of a structure, an outline structure, um, posting of the posts, not the actual fence. But so I, oh. I, I do think that um, there is some urgency to hearing this. Um, we can't, without the applicant here, we can't get any assurances that the work has not continued. Um, so, um, you know, I don't think that uh, I don't think the presence is required. I'm thinking back. You know, I, I may have said that I've never seen this before. I'm thinking maybe there have been situations that have happened to us before, although I believe those were uncontested. But um, despite that, it's not a requirement that the applicant be present. And I, again, I, I think that we should proceed. I th I think we have enough information from what's in the file. We have the sketches. We have the plans. We have the request. We have the application, um, so I, I I do think that I feel like I have sufficient information through all of the materials and the record to proceed with this. Maureen, I'm learning as I go to two seasoned uh -huh. board members, and what uh, Elizabeth says makes a lot of sense. So, mm -hmm. if, if we're moving forward with this, what would be our next step? Uh, well, we can uh, discuss the application here in the public hearing, and then we can uh, we can ask uh, Nathan: Is there uh, comments from the DPW or other city agencies? I mean, I I think I never been in a situation where um, applicant didn't appear with, from the here to the hearing without a notice. Usually, they write a continuation notice. Um, so, well, if, um, not even sure we can <laughs> open the hearing. We can continue. We can delay it, but 
No, no, we can open it. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. No, the rules allow uh, for us to do that. Okay, great. Um, yeah. We certainly um, can open it, and uh, okay. and we can proceed. Um, and it's it's true, our uh, getting questions answered by the applicant is limited, and that's sort of a choice that the applicant makes, whether they uh, or not. So, uh, as we proceed, the application, do we have any comments from DPW? I actually, um, just for my lady, could they formally open the, I mean, if you, the board's decision to open the hearing, could I take a roll call as a format to make sure? All in favor of opening this public hearing? Roll call. Okay. Um, so, uh, Sarah? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Maureen? Yes. All right. Thank you for uh, making sure we stay with our format as much as possible in this. So, um, having reviewed the application, all three of us have reviewed the application, and we know that there are concerns about it. Um, I'm going to for public comment. Raising their hands, please state your so, name and address, and uh, for the record, and uh, Nathan will call on you, and I'll ask you to keep it to a, a reasonable time frame and not too much repetitive of uh, other folks. So, and can I um, just suggest yes. before that happens, Sarah, um, is yes. that we just summarize. The application um, that it is for a special permit requiring a, 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 a unanimous vote, right, um, to uh, construct a, an eight and a half foot fence. Um, it's not clear if it's right on the property line or within the property line um, of 114 feet along the border with the neighbor at 415 Ryan Road. Um, does that does that summarize it adequately? Well, the reason it's an eight and a half, the reason it's coming to us is code zoning code is six and a half feet. Right, right. Eight and a half is That's permitted primary. in industrial uh, zones, but not residential. And again, the standard is that um, the board must find that the the change is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Thank you. And and so it is it's really about the height of it. Um, not so much about the placement as long as it is on the applicant's property. Yeah, I I I'm not sure I'm not sure of that because there seemed to be something I read around the placement that affects the um the upkeep. And I and it may not be applicable. I, it wasn't entirely clear to me, so I just wanted to mention that piece. Well, if Nathan's familiar with that, my understanding is that the only question of upkeep happens if it's right on the property line. Right, right, and it's not clear to me with where the proposed placement will be. Yes, we might we might need that clarified. I'm also unclear if it's replacing the current stockade fence or uh because I did do I did a site visit and the posts are in for the new fence and they are adjacent to the existing stockade fence, which I believe I read was originally installed by the applicant. And the new posts that are already in and the supporting cross beams are maybe a foot away, foot back from that. Okay. Um, when you say a foot away and adjacent, in what direction? In the direction of the applicant's property. Perpendicular to the street, correct? Just Perpendicular. Backing to... away slightly from the existing fence. Yes. 
And I can I'm confirm not sure that. if that stockade fence is going to come down or if the abutters are going to see both fences. Uh, that that was that's that's unclear. What were you going to say, Nathan? I was just confirming that, yes, the proposed metal fence, the posts for it anyways, are closer to toward the applicant's property than the existing uh, stockade fence. But is it on the line or is it in the applicants? It's uh, it's uh, from my understanding, um, it's within the property of the applicant. But okay. I think we would need actually um, the applicant to clarify that. Okay. Um, well, or we could make yeah. conditions, so. Right. Uh, um, so can I also just suggest, Sarah, that when if people speak, they can uh, assume that we've read anything that's previously been submitted. So we would appreciate not to repeat and read and or read what's been previously submitted. Excuse me, Madam Sir, about that. Uh, City Councilor uh, Labarge had actually specifically requested that her comment be read. Uh, I know, just, I, I know. Yeah, yes. I know, I know. Uh, I know she requested it. We read that. So we read the whole comment. I did anyway. I can't speak for the others, but. All right. So are we prepared to hear from um, members of the public who would like to speak in favor of this application? Yes, we're ready. Yes. Any hands, Nathan? Yes, there is a uh, uh, Lorraine Ryan first hand raise, and then there's George uh, Danziger. So I can ask Lorraine to unmute. Uh, yes, hi, I'm Lorraine Ryan. I live at 415 Ryan Road. And what I'd like to say is I got a knock on my door for prior to this meeting from the, my neighbor at 405 Ryan Road, said they've rescinded the request for the eight and a half foot high fence. So I just wanted to say that. Um, but, and in fact, if he has rescinded it, my next question is what about the, the design structure? Is this, would it still be for a metal fence? Yes, we don't know the answers to those questions. Yeah, I mean, that's my one big concern and I did submit my comments and concerns into into Nathan. So, I mean, if he's- The metal fence is all made. Yeah, you know, the metal fence is fabricated by the applicant it's and it's it's like metal from a metal building. I mean, which I mm -hmm. totally am sorry, wouldn't, is not, you know, it's just not pretty. Um, so, I, you know, more. But that's that's my next question. If he, if, you know, if this is here. Said she knocked on my door. Said that they were rescinding their application for the eight and a half foot fence. But my next question being is, is it this still going to be a metal fence if they go with the the allotted six foot high fence? Ah, well, that would be uh, a separate uh, building permit application for them to do that fence, I believe. So I, I bet Nathan is checking his emails to see if he has any record of the applicant rescinding their request. Yes, I think there was some confusion or um, the applicant forgot. I, I communicated earlier with the applicant telling him that if he wants to withdraw, he has to notify me in writing. Um, so I communicated that to him and he never sent me any. Unless my email system is broken, I never got any formal request uh, from him in writing. So um, I was not aware of this uh, this communication. All right, well, it's, um, it's a, maybe true, but it's a rumor as far as we're considering because we don't have it in writing. Thank you very much for that comment. Um, there was another hand up, George. It's uh, George uh, Danziger. Uh, go, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Good evening. Um, Philip Benfield, it's also called me to say that um, he was withdrawing the application. So he may not have formally um, contacted you, but I think the, the eight and a half foot fence application is a dead issue. Um, would, would you name your Nick? Would you identify yourself and your address? Please? Oh, I'm George Danziger, 31 Terrace Circle. Florence. 
Um, so I, th I think the eight and a half foot issue is, uh, is moot. Okay. But um, the question of, of the design of the fence and how that might be under control of the ZBA or the building inspector or whatever remains a little bit confused. Well, I, if I can jump in here. Um, ahead, yeah, I, I think that we should take a vote on the application since we don't have any formal withdrawal. I think we could vote against it because, you know, the applicant isn't here and, um, you know, I think there were enough issues, but um, in terms of the future of the fence, my understanding is if the applicant puts in a six and a half foot fence on his property, um, it, there's no regulation with respect to the materials that are used. So um, I'm not sure that there's anything that the board could do, but irrespective, it's not before the board right now. So it would be, um, it would be, we would not be in a position to act on anything other than this application that's before us. So if I right. might move to what I intend to do, and you can stop me before doing it if you don't think it's wise, but I would first move to close the public hearing and then immediately move to deny the application. And I think that would end this piece of it. Um, well, having um, opened the public hearing and heard from uh, two people, um, I don't really feel like I should just cut it short. OK. And, uh, and so far. So far what short, Sarah? The, uh, our, our public hearing. Um, I want to know if there's other people, and you know it's true we don't want to, you know, waste everybody's time. But um, I don't have it in writing that the that the uh, on. Oh, I've, I've, I've... Sarah, we are losing your we are losing you, your voice. You're cutting out. No, well, I'm sorry. Verizon this time. Well, I think we should see. Uh, are there a lot of hands up from uh, public comment uh, in opposition to this application? Um, George Danziger has raised his hand again. That's the, he's the only person with the hand raised. All right. Well, I'd, I'd like to hear from George Danziger again and then uh, entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Okay, and uh, it's George Danziger and Lorraine Ryan again. So just letting you know, I'll unmute. Uh, I'll unmute the or George Danziger. Please go ahead. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Chung, whose visit to the property um, a day or two back was very helpful uh, to orient all the butters and the uh, the applicant to the to the very rules based procedure which you guys are involved in. And I think that was extremely helpful and it was very professional, very helpful. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is that uh, um, there, are no, there are discussions now going on among the abutters um, to find some mutually acceptable solution to this problem. Um, and I think um, it's quite likely that that will be the outcome, that there'll be a mutually acceptable solution. That's it. Good. Thank you. And um, Lorraine Ryan also has her hand up if the board wants to allow her yeah. to speak. I, I, I guess I'm confused by this now. So this is going to be just closed and because he's decided by hearsay to go to a six foot fence, it goes to the building department. Well, and we there's don't no know if he's going, I'm sorry. There's no ahead. control over what design or the material yeah. used is of, of the fence then. That is another very big concern of mine. My understanding is that if he complies with zoning, it won't come before the zoning board. Okay. It will be a regular, um, he follow the city ordinance for building a, a, a compliant fence. Um, so we would not be involved with the material, review of the materials or design. All right, so then that goes to the building department, correct? Yes. Okay. 
I, I just, because I have very big concerns over the materials. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Elizabeth, did you want to make a motion? Uh, sure, I'll move to close the public hearing. I'll second it. A roll okay. call. Yes. One second. Uh, uh, Elizabeth? Yes. Maureen? Yes. And Sarah? Yes. I'll be here and close. Very good. So we've closed the public hearing. We can discuss a bit more and uh, make a motion with or without conditions on the application. On the board. I have no discussion okay. points on it. I don't have any beyond what I've already said. All right. I'd like to make a motion. Elizabeth. All right. Uh, yeah, I move that we deny the application to um, allow the fence, the eight and a half foot fence. I second that. Okay, by roll call. Um, Elizabeth? Yes. Maureen? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Uh, just, just checking if there's any further discussion among the board. Um, Go ahead, roll call. Yes, um, Elizabeth? Yes. Maureen? Yes, we're voting to deny, right? Correct. Yes. And Sarah? Yes. Um, unanimous denial of the application. Very good, thank you. And thank you to the public, Nathan, yes. for supporting out and with and Maureen's support. Thank you Thanks. to the public for participating in this process. All right, uh, any uh, meeting minutes or further discussion before we close the public meeting? Uh, there are minutes um, oh, yeah. from the... Uh, April 13th. Thank you, it was <laughs> not on the top there, so. Um, there was one suggestion I had. Um, uh, was Meadow Street. Uh, there was one where you said that something was approved with conditions, but didn't set out what the conditions were. And oh. I thought it might be a good idea to include those. Um, and I can't remember. Is there only one set of minutes or is there more than one? There's one set of minutes and I had the same consideration. We say okay. conditions, but we don't really identify the conditions. They're, they're, as you drill back through the minutes, you can uh, assume what they were, but I think it should be clearer. And I also wonder how it is, how, uh, is it appropriate for us to vote on the minutes when we don't have the voting members as part of this? Like, Dave, yes, yes mm -hmm. I understand it. That's that's allowable. Um, it's not. Okay. We're not. We're not. Um, we're just adopting these minutes. That we're not necessarily doing anything beyond that. So I, I've raised that in the past too, Maureen. I understand. So I don't, um, as I understand it, that's not an issue. But yeah, okay, I, I did find it. Um, so here it says, Silver made the motion to approve the special permit with conditions. Northrop seconded, both board voted unanimously. So I think um, right there, if you could spell out, I, I, maybe we don't have to do it right now, Nathan, um, mm -hmm. but I think you know, this piece of what we voted on probably is important to include in the minutes. I don't think we need a lot of detail all along the way, but I, I do think that one piece is probably useful to have. It's sort of a, a, a draft of the decision that gets filed. Right. And if it, if it got appealed, then we'd certainly want some specificity in the minutes. Understood. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Um, I thank was maybe you. being too succinct. I will basically create mm -hmm. a summer, like a minutes, uh, like a summarized content or the summer summary of the conditions using the formal filed permits. Okay. Uh, and it has already 
been well past the 20-day appeal period and with no appeal. So it's it's uh, it's past the appeal period. So I'll just summarize it based on the decision. Yeah, and yeah, it, just whatever the, I'm sure the conditions aren't very lengthy. Um, so that would be good. All right. Well, Thank you. Th with, th with that change, um, and I, and I understand it's a little outstanding, but I don't have a problem moving to adopt these minutes with that one change. Without seeing and then reviewing that. Yeah, change. I trust that Nathan is going to, you know, just it's all it's really just a clerical kind of inclusion. It's not any anything subjective. So it what will I'm just assuming this means is he's going to pull from the minutes what we considered the conditions and. I just bullet point them where we specify, where we say that there were conditions. Is that what you're expecting, Elizabeth? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's from the minutes or if it's from the transcript. So I'd trust Nathan to do it in whichever way made the most sense. I, I guess I'd like to see them before okay. voting on them. All right. Okay. So then we'll table these. All right, I'll withdraw my motion to approve and move to table the minutes until our next meeting. Second. Um, yep. Roll call. Yep. yep, by roll call. Um, Elizabeth? Yes. Maureen? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and now it's, do we, uh, should we, next meeting, July, end of July, is that? Right, or do we have anything else in June? No, we have not received any permits. So um, until so in July 13th is the recess. So July 27th is the earliest tentative day for the meeting. Okay. Do we know whether or not we're on? It's too early to know, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. No. You know, there's you need a one month uh, lie between the application coming in and uh, starting the hearing. So okay. we have no we have no uh, um, applications as of now. Okay. So sounds good. All right. Thank you for your support, Nathan. Right. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, and, thanks a lot. I know we've been thanks. sticking a lot on you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm still fumbling a little bit, but uh, thank you for all your support and patience. Oh well, well uh, you know, as you know, much as I did tonight. So thank right. you. You've encountered many exceptions <laughs> already. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. All right. So a uh, motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn. Okay, by roll call. I'll uh, second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> roll call. I got confused. Wait, so I just for records, who who for who firsted and who seconded? I I second. Maureen firsted. Okay, all right. Yes. Uh, okay, by roll call. Um, Elizabeth. Yes. Maureen. Yes. Sarah. Yes. 